Hi, I'm Nacio Calomarde and I'm part of the UAV Navigations Group of SIAT within the Flight Control Department as a Solution Lead. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the capabilities of the UAV Navigation Group of SIAT Vector System. More specifically, we are going to focus on the multi UAV operation with several aircraft flying at the same time with coordinated flight capability. After opening our GCS software Visionaire without any configuration, we load the mission file prepared during the operation planning phase. This file allows us to quickly load all necessary configuration. We start to record the flight log in this way when the systems are turned on, all information on their configuration involved in the operation is recorded for post-flight analysis. When the aircraft flight control systems are turned on, a data link connection is established between the GCS and the different aircraft. It then begins to download all the information from the four UAVs and two ground hub units we have connected. The alarm panel is updated, giving us the status of the different aircraft and GCS equipment. The reference update and the low speed alarms appear, a normal behavior for an aircraft on ground. In the system list, we have the four UAVs and their visible IDs, their guidance mode, the knee, an icon, and the color of their trace, which we have assigned so we can differentiate them easily. In the upper right corner of the local network panel, we have information on the ground station's communication network. It shows a vision or control station, from where we are recording this video, that carries out commands on the AP-28, Alpha, and two ground hub units. If we open the information panel on the air side, the information of the four autopilots appears. One commanded by Visioner 1, this control point, is marked by the icon mic marking it is our position. The other control station on the network, Visioner 2, is controlled by a colleague located in the same room as Visioner 1, so we can communicate between each other easily. He commands two autopilots connected to GH2-1, Charlie and Delta, and I command the two attached to the ground hub unit 2, Alpha and Bravo. In today's mission, we have four aircraft positioned on the impact of the launch. Each reporting the relative altitude with respect to the other commanded aircraft to the nearby traffic attack. The following flight plans have been designed. After takeoff, four departure flight plans have been designed that end in a loiter point or waypoint to check that the four takeoff operations have been completed successfully. In the right area, we have the four recovery flight plans that end with a parachute deployment in the designated area. Finally, we have an H shape auto flight plan, which in the case of Alpha and Bravo has this direction we see now. However, if we are going to command Charlie, for example, using a keyboard shortcut, we can hide the flight plans of the other aircraft and we can see that in their case, it, this flight plan has the opposite direction. This design will later be used for the coordinated flight demonstration. From the control station, we can select the visibility of the flight plans, the predictive paths and the no-fly zones. We choose whether we want to see those of all the aircraft or only those of the commanded air. As for the no-flight zones, they are LED 120 and 121, commonly used in intact day operations. We are also simulating the presence of a manned aircraft. At the moment, we are not simulating its movement for the convenience of the simulation. During the demo, we will use it as an external aircraft to the system that reports its position to a UAV through a reference to perform operations reference to the position of this aircraft. We begin with the takeoff operations. The pre-flight of the four simulator aircraft were carried out before the recording of the video. So all that remains is to command takeoff. We can see how Alpha's guidance mode has changed to takeoff. The second operator commands takeoff to Charlie and a notification appears in the lower right corner of my station. I command takeoff to Bravo. A notification will also appear on the other station's control panel. Finally, takeoff is commanded to Delta. As we can see, the aircraft take off sequentially and autonomously. Each one continues towards its pre-programmed waiting point. In the alarm panel, we can see how all the alarms have turned green, just as we would expect in an operation without incidents. We can also see how the near traffic indications have turned red, because we are flying aircraft in close proximity. For example, now Alpha's indication has turned to yellow with respect to Bravo. This is because the aircraft are further away from each other and they are flying in divergent direction. 
As during the operation, we are going to fly the flow of the power aircraft in close proximity. We are going to turn off the alert through the overlay panel to simplify the instance. Each aircraft has its own labels recording information from its status. The nickname, its flight speed, here, its height with respect to sea level, the estimated time of arrival at the waypoint, and the commanded arrival time, which we're not using at the moment, but will be useful during the demonstration of coordination capabilities. The next phase of the maneuver, once all the aircraft are coordinated at their holding point, will be to proceed to a rendezvous point where we will demonstrate the ability to arrive to a waypoint at a certain time. We will also demonstrate the time coordination between all the simulators as we will command all the aircraft to arrive at the same time. We will command each aircraft to reach the waypoint at the same time, but at a different height to avoid conflicts. We first give Charlie the command. We can see how the predicted path is modified, indicating the new destination and informing the other operators of the change. Once this command is done, we will see how the command is done for Bravo on screen. We command an up to, to the point of interest, and we command the flight height assigned to this aircraft, which in this case is 350 meters. We check Charlie's tag for the arrival time, commanded at the other station, and we assign the same arrival time to make the arrival simultaneous. After confirmation of the command to Delta is received, we command Alpha to arrive to the rendezvous point at the same time as the rest of the Earth. As we can see, all the aircraft that are adapt their speed autonomously to meet the assigned time target. Alpha, for example, has a command of 105 meters per second, while Bravo only requires 80 meters per second to meet the object. If the wind conditions change, affecting the arrival time, the system will calculate the necessary speed and adjust to any situation. In addition, at any time it's been necessary to reach the target is outside of the available envelope, the system would alert the operator of the situation. We can observe how all the aircraft reach the point at the same time. UTC 11 or 236. As they arrive at different speeds, the riders of loiter commanded to each one is slightly different, adapting to their available rate of charge. Once we have demonstrated the ability to reach a point at a given time and the existence of a common time reference between the different aircraft, we will show the ability to execute flight plans in a coordinated manner, even when the flight plan route of each aircraft is different. To do this, we will command the four aircraft to execute a flight plan in an H. Remember that the flight plan has the opposite direction for two of the aircraft, so the aircraft trajectories will cross at waypoint 10. The first step is to command go to waypoint to all four aircraft to get them into the flight plan. We can see the update of the predictive pass. Using the synchronization command, Bravo is requested to coordinate with ALF, in this case, Autopilot ID 28, so that it will reach the waypoint of its flight plan 30 seconds after all. At the same time, Charlie is commanded from the other station to reach its waypoints 15 seconds behind the leader, and Delta to pass 45 seconds behind. This generates an alternate crossing at waypoint 10, demonstra demonstrating the aircraft's ability to coordinate with each other. 
It should be clarified that the communication of the different arrival times of the different aircraft between each other can be done through the GCS communication network or through a dedicated air-to-air -air dial. All arrival time reports are defined using UTC time, so that the aircraft have a common time reference that prevents the latency of communication networks affecting the coordination. As we can see, all the aircraft are adapting their speed automatically without intervention of the human pilot, significantly reducing the workload required for this type of operation, allowing the command of two aircraft by each human pilot. While the aircraft reach the target, we can explain the local network panel in further detail. For example, in the case of Bravo, the aircraft that we are now commanding, we can see that the aircraft is visible to the two visioners or control stations, that right now the joystick of the station 2 is commanding this aircraft, that it is connected through ground path unit 2, and that it could accept commands from visioner 2 if it's required. This option can be limited through the network topology or coordination between the operators. For this simulation, we have allowed all control points to be able to control all aircraft to simplify the operation. However, right now it is under the control of Visioner 1, which is the one we are seeing on screen. Focusing again on the target point of coordination, we can see Alpha Reach. Fifteen seconds later, Charlie reaches the point. Then, Bravo, 30 seconds later, and finally, Delta will pass 45 seconds after Alpha, first pass through the point. Next, we are going to explain the follow command between aircraft. The system allows the aircraft to be commanded to follow the path of another aircraft in the system with a time loss. To do so, we are going to order an auto command to Alpha, so it will exit its current file. Then, we will request Charlie, Bravo and Delta to replicate Alpha's path with 15, 30 and 45 second ops. Once again, the communication between the aircraft can be carried out through the GCS communication network on the ground or through a dedicated vehicle-to-vehicle -to -vehicle or B2B communication link. When Alpha exits the flight plan, coordination for the other aircraft is no longer possible in the flight plan. The other three aircraft will automatically increase their speed command as they have lost the leader with which to synchronize and will remain on the flight. Again, a notification appears in the lower right corner. We can see the change in the predictive path. Bravo is sent a command 30 seconds behind, and finally Delta with the command 45 seconds later. We can see how the different aircraft reach their position within the follow-up formation. Once they reach the first follow-up point, their commanded position is constantly updated based on Alpha's trajectory. If we now modify Alpha's trajectory, the rest of the aircraft will follow its path at 15 seconds intervals.
in the lower left part of the screen, we have a reference that represents an external aircraft to the system. That is, not controlled by a UAV navigation FCS. Can either be man or just another UAV that is reporting its position to us, and that we are now going to use for the next phase of the demo, in which we are going to track external aircraft in open formation using reference navigation. In the simulator, we can set the speed of this aircraft. In this case, we will set the simulator to command a speed of about 100 meters per second. In the same way that we ask aircraft to follow each other, we can ask them to follow an external reference. In this case, we command the time offset of about 10 seconds to all aircraft. Each aircraft is set to follow the reference with a slightly different distance of offset from the aircraft's actual position, allowing them to enter an open formation about 200 meters apart from each other. After receiving the command, the aircraft begin to accelerate to catch up with the leader and regulate their speed automatically to reach their position without overtaking. Again, this reference position update can be received on the aircraft from the ground station communications network, if latency allows for it, or from a dedicated link between the lead aircraft and the four UAVs. The arrival not in time alarm, in this case, indicates that the aircraft will not be able to reach the initial tracking position in time, the position the leader had 10 seconds after the command, and that it will reset the 10 seconds command offset to the current position of the leader. has already reached its position in the formation. Once this happens, it begins a follow-up flight similar to the previous case, tightly following the position and speed updates of the leader. Now, Charlie arrives to its position in the formation. After it, Bravo will reach its position, and lastly Delta, since it was the aircraft furthest behind in the follow-up formation, will reach its position. As in the previous case, if the leading aircraft makes turns, the other aircraft will maintain their formation to adapt to the trajectory followed by the leading reference. To demonstrate the capabilities of the High Dynamic Maneuver tool, we are going to use it to perform the formation break between the aircraft and proceed with the return home. Each aircraft will make turns in different directions at 4 Gs to separate efficiently. First, 
delta breaks out the formation. Next, char. Then, bravo upon a simple command from a user switch breaks the formation. Finally, alpha remains following the lead aircraft. Once the breakout maneuvers are completed, the different aircraft ascend to the configure safety head and proceed to the landing point autonomous. We will stay with Alpha for a few more seconds to demonstrate the maneuver with planning capabilities based on no fly zones. In order to demonstrate it, we will generate two circular no-fly zones as Axel. We upload them to the autopilot. And we issue an app to command that requires going through Wi-Fi. The aircraft detects that it's going to enter a no-fly zone and activates the route for planning logic in real time avoiding the different obstacles that have been programmed into the system. We can see how the aircraft continues towards the commanded destination once the obstacles have been avoided. Finally, to close this presentation, we command the aircraft to return to the recovery point in land mode, where it will perform a parachute land. The maneuver will be performed autonomously as it is being performed by the other three aircraft during these last minutes. Thank you for your attention. It has been a pleasure showing you the Vector Multi-UAV capabilities in action. We will keep you updated with new capabilities available in our system.